this presentation is to provide the board with an update on standards referenced grading or SRG. This presentation is for the board's information. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, I'm Christy O'Toole. I'm the Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction, and I'm here with Holly Ingram today, and she'll be helping give you an update. Um, Holly is one of our secondary math specialists. So we're really wanting to just share with you today how things are going and really start also addressing some of the, the, the things that we've been doing as we problem solve around our implementation. So we wanted to start your update just by giving you a quick look at how things are going at the elementary level. And so you're going to see an, a video from Cloud Elementary where the teachers are touching base and telling us um, how things are going and we've recently shared this with our elementary folks. What do we know about the words? They are? Standards reference grading was a big shift in learning here at Cloud Elementary this year. Uh, we went slow to go fast so that we could understand what it was we were doing so that we could be doing it well. The first semester has been a learning curve for sure. Um, I kind of like to think of it as a crock pot and not a microwave. Um, I know eventually um, it will all come together, but it's um, slow to grow. In the beginning, when I would show the targets to my students, I could tell that they were a little confused. Um, it was a lot to take in, but now they seem to understand it. So I can say, this is our target, this is where I want you to be, and they all know that if they aren't there now, that they're going to get there at the end of the school year. That's the eventual goal. A period, a question mark. The teachers here at Cloud have been committed. It was very quickly that they determined that this was the right way to go, even if they weren't ready yet to go there. Um, and so they worked really hard to fully understand um, the whole process of planning and teaching and assessing and grading. One thing I hear is that it makes teaching so much more intentional and a narrowed focus makes us feel like our goals are attainable. We're seeing growth in the students and success breeds success. So seeing the ball rolling in the right direction feels good. Um, and that one of the things that I've heard teachers say before is that our grading has never felt right and now it feels better. We know specifically what students know each individual skill so we can use that information to either reteach a skill or um, include it in a small group uh, teaching activity that we do. It's better because it does it focuses on specific things and it helps you. For math it didn't matter what we were doing if it was um, like area and perimeter and then multiplication division it would all just be a math grade but now it is divided by targets, specifically by the standards, so parents and students can know like, oh, they get division, they can do this part of division really well, but they may not understand this part of division well. Turn and tell the person next to you what is going on. My teacher explained it as, if you get a one, it's fine at the beginning of the year, because she knows that you need help on something. And I like it better, because I also get to know what I need help on. Initially, they're always like, I don't want a one. No one wants a one. And so it's been difficult in the beginning to get them to accept that a one is okay in the beginning. And they're also advocating for themselves. I will have kids now like in a writing activity be like, look, I wrote a simile or we'll read something and they'll point it out. I think what's gone really well is SRGs and planning. I think we're really intentional with how we're planning and what standards we're incorporating into our lessons, um, what standards we're making our big rocks, and that has led for our teaching to be more intentional. We've been able to spend significant amount of time during our professional learning and our team times to really dive in and understand the standards and to apply the planning documents um, and have a lot of grace with each other as we are collaboratively planning 
And one of the things that we've seen is that a lot of the targets are repetitive. So as we get more comfortable with them, we're like, oh, there's that target again. We feel good about this one. Next semester is really going to go smoothly because we now have a full understanding of what it means to be at a three or a two or a one. And we have a good understanding of what the foundational targets are, as well as what our, our goal is that we're working for. One of the things I'm looking the most forward to is the growth that the students have made. We knew where they started and the teachers are working so hard and the kids are working so hard. I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends for them and that screener data, data assessment data, all the data starts correlating and that it all means the same thing. I'm looking forward to that and then the teacher efficacy of them looking at it and knowing what they're doing and feeling good about it. It's also really fun to hear the kids talk. When I ask them, what do you like about standards reference grading? I like that they can tell me, I know what my goal is, I know where I am now, and I know what I need to do to get there. So that's been really great having those conversations with the kids too. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about tonight was that we know that if K-12 from our research that it would take 15,000 hours to teach all of our standards well. And we know at best we have 9,000. And that's another reason why it's so important that our kids are at school consistently and that that's one of our targets as a district. Because we, we need to use all of those hours and we need to use all of those minutes as, as best we can. And so that's one of the reasons we are prioritizing our standards. It's not that we're te not teaching all of them. We teach all our standards, but we want to spend the most time on the ones that are critical and the ones that we agree, K-12, these are the ones the kids need to have so that we can move them forward. So before our year started, we did have identified, um, for example, at the kindergarten level, 25 standards to target for and prioritize, which means that we, were, we also ask our teachers to assess and report on those targets. We did start that work before the year started. We started looking at a total of 41 targets. And so prior to this year, of the, the targets, we already narrowed down to 25. And it is very difficult to have a set of standards that you know kids need to know and then start to say these are the ones that are the most important. So we did narrow to 25 and then at every year, this is not a new process for our district, but every year we have groups of teachers come in and they look at our current curriculum and they evaluate the instructional unit guides and all of those things. So we're starting that process now. Um, some of our groups started in January and as they're doing that, they're also looking at the number of targets and deciding which ones do we need to, to probably prioritize even more. So that is something that we're looking at. Another thing that we've been working on this year as we implement SRG is we started the year with some professional learning that we knew was important for teachers to have. And as the year went on, when we were getting feedback about the time that was needed, we did make those required. So we do know that there have been eight required PDs that were implemented that will continue to be implemented through the rest of this year. And we're also looking at what we're going to do next year to continue our professional learning on standard reference grading. Um, another thing that we've been working on is providing from our feedback, providing sessions for professional learning after school for ELA planning. Those sessions have been well attended. We, they started at the beginning of the year and they also are going to the end of the year. There are still sessions that people can attend. And then we've also, from feedback, added some OTIS sessions, providing some additional professional learning for teachers that wanted to learn more about OTIS. That was a request that we had. Um, one of the other things that we struggled with at the beginning of the year with OTIS was the folders. Well, not having the folders. So when teachers went into their OTIS environment, their OTIS platform, they would see a long list of assessments and they weren't able to organize them. And so in January, they are now, or they fixed that and so now we can organize those. Yes. Um, 
So another thing that we have been working on is pr being able to provide teachers a way to assign multiple targets at once in Otis. And so that has also been, we've gotten some positive feedback from that. So we are continuing to problem solve and we're continuing to listen to feedback. And one of the things that we wanted to talk a little bit about was we do have some continued challenges with our program with Otis. Um, for example, it takes time to learn how to navigate a new system. That's one of the reasons that we're offering additional professional learning is to ask questions and have people um, have time to do that. The other thing that we're kind of struggling with is we have computers in some of our buildings for our teachers that are, it just takes a while for the Otis system to load, but we're working on that. We're working on, we think that when those new, those new computers are in place that it will be better. Um, one of the things that we are still working on, and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to solve this this year, but teachers don't have the ability to um, preview or print a progress report. We have people in the building that can do that for them, but at this point in time, that's, that's a frustration that we hear quite often. Then uh, we are, our district, we have Synergy, and Microsoft Teams is something that we're starting to bring in. And Otis, right now, we're still working through how to make those two systems talk to each other. The company is very responsive to concerns. It just it takes time. So we're still problem solving around those things. And we'll continue to do that. So just to, to also let you know where we're going next with standards reference grading, we are continuing to prioritize our standards and, and look at the targets. We're also, next year, our professional learning will we'll spend more time on learning intention examples and the success criteria for students. And what I mean by that, I'll show you a quick example. This is an example of how a teacher is sharing with her students. The learning intention is, this, that's your target. And it's in kid-friendly terms, so this, the students know that they can add numbers to 10 fluently. And then below that, is really being very clear with students about what the success criteria looks like so that students know this is exactly what I need to do in order to meet that standard. This is something that we're already doing, but we'll have a little bit more of a focus on that as we continue our professional learning. The timeline for implementation of standards reference grading was updated in November of 2019. Middle schools will begin implementation during the 2020 and 2021 school year for sixth grade. Progress reports will reflect the new grading system for students in sixth grade during this first year of implementation. Progress reports will reflect the new grading system for students in seventh and eighth grade in the 2021-2022 school year. High school will begin implementing the new grading system during the 2022-2023 school year in entry-level high school courses. Our next video highlights some of our middle school teachers who have been highlighting using proficiency scales in their classroom during this school year. Work with that shoulder partner or somebody close to you, use your equation how can you find how many hours she worked? And that's the first year that I've piloted scales. Um, I actually moved to a new building this year too, a new curriculum, new everything. So with the scales, I was able to just jump right into to a brand new, brand new set of, of things to do. Uh, I teach interrelated language arts, and um, this is my first year piloting scales, and it has been one of my biggest successes for this school year. Being the first year piloting, I will tell you that I was, it was very overwhelming initially. Um, with the grading, grading their assignments has gotten a lot easier uh, in terms of, I'm not counting questions. I'm not looking for how many do you have right or wrong. I'm looking for conceptual understanding. So far it has gone pretty well where students are still kind of getting what they're used to, so they're kind of, I'm more weaning them into it. So as full implementation is added on year by year, they're prepared for it instead of it kind of being just a shot right there and they have to start right away. Remember, on this SRG, a three is our target. A three is what you're aiming for. 
It's changed my planning process a lot because instead of just looking at all the different things that students can know, I can now specifically target really what is the key concept or the core concepts that students really need to understand to be able to achieve success. We've always planned using our instructional unit guides, the state standards, um, but with the scales we've become more intentional in our lesson selections and refining our instruction. This gives me a sense of direction. It helps me an awful lot with uh, just having planning. It felt like I was just picking and choosing what I was doing because we don't have a set special education curriculum. So this gives me a lot more direction and staying in line with what everybody else is doing in the other classrooms as well. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to teach anymore. It's all right there in the scales. I can unpack it. Not only do I know what I'm teaching, but the foundational skills that build up to that. Um, so now I just get to worry about how to teach. So I get to do the fun stuff. My students were very confused initially because it's incredibly new for our eighth graders. They haven't had um, experience with this yet, um, but they've really taken to it. It just takes that transitional period for them. Um, with anything, they were hesitant at first. They're really hardwired to want a letter grade and a percentage grade, um, but they've really come around and we've been able to have some good conversation about what a three means or what can I do to get to that three. Um, so with any with anything, it's going to take some time, but they're, they're flexible. I'll pull up the scales on the board and I really want to talk with them on it. I want them to see what's being asked so they kind of get a full understanding. And same thing with parents too, sending the scales home to parents so they can look at it and understand, you know, this is how the district's moving, this is what is going to be asked. You know, we encourage you to talk with your students. My students, they really kind of latched onto it a lot. They understand what they need to know a lot better because I break down the scales as best as I can. I use this student-friendly language when I break them down so the students understand exactly what they need. And then you have students that when they don't meet the goal or have a score that they really like, they can they look over and they look at my wall over here and they go, uh, can I redo this? They know what the three is and if I didn't get to a three, what could I do on a level two? And so we always look at why they're at the three and why they're at the two and what that means. Um, we tried to take away the verbiage of you got an A or you got a B, but more of you hit the target, you did what you were supposed to be able to do. There are some things I turn in and I tell them I'm looking at this to see where you are. I'm looking at this and holding you accountable for these learning processes. Um, and it's become less of the, is this for a grade? And okay, I'm going to do this and participate in those learning opportunities because everything builds on itself. So your main job tomorrow, based off our standard, is going to be to analyze the development and characteristics of Athens and Sparta. So it is really helpful with assessing students because it allows me to get a better grasp on what they do understand and where they're struggling and then I can pinpoint exactly where is maybe the gaps are showing up that way I can target them a little bit more provide them a little bit more help or material so that they can be successful and on grade level with everybody else. With the skills I've been able to give my kids frequent informal assessments so I know where they are as we're learning not just at the end of of a topic or a unit um, so they get the feedback as we work and and I get the feedback too so I can assess how they're doing and if I need to change what we're what we're teaching so they can really master it and get to that level three. Grading is actually a little bit it seems more simplified uh, so they really know exactly what it is I have it posted so they can look and I also give them direct feedback right there some things they do really well and other things they don't do as well so I'm able to really hone in on what I need to work on or maybe what I need to teach a little differently. It makes it very clear for myself and for students and I've been able to have some quality conversations with classes who were not pleased with where their performance was to have that conversation to say this is what you can improve on. These are the areas that I'm not seeing that you have full understanding and mastery in. It's assessing you on, a, on how well you write a summary over our text, okay? Change is not easy. Uh, it's a big change in thought process. Give as much feedback to the students as possible. Uh, I think they appreciate that and they also, uh, they also appreciate the fact that they understand how you're grading them. You need to be very open to the idea and it is hard. Work with your coaches. My data coach here at Kristen McCullough Academy has been vital. My sixth grade team that I work with has been um, so helpful. Without a team, I think that this would have been a, a floundering of a year, so definitely get yourself a good team that you, that you can work with, and, and I've been um, super grateful that they've 
been along with the ride with me. This is absolutely a positive transition. It is a mindset shift that has changed my grading practices, that has changed my instruction, all for the positive. And I feel that I'm a far better teacher for using scales in my instruction. Scales has been one of the two big things that's changed the way I teach. I'm so much more comfortable with our curriculum now and um, with having those conversations with my students and I'm just grateful that I gave it a shot. Um, it has kinks, but we'll work them out and, and I think it's gonna be really powerful with our kids. There you go. So as we think about next year for the sixth grade implementation, what exactly will this look like? So our academic sixth grade courses will be using scales in their instruction, planning, and grading. Intervention and consortium courses will have identified course expectations and guidelines. And then the sixth grade progress reports will display the learning targets. Those intervention and consortium courses will be just marked as a pass-fail based on that identified criteria since they don't have defined state standards. Um, next, you should have in your packet an example of what that sixth grade report card looks like. Um, parents can expect to see an overall grade and then scores based on the individual targets for each course. In seventh and eighth grade next year, those courses will be using the scales for their instruction and planning. They, their progress report will not display the standards um, in the grading overall course grade. So the teachers have the option to use the standards-based grade book, but the overall report card will still just report an overall grade for the class. The intervention and consortium classes will begin using those same expectations and course guideline documents. Um, and then you have an example of a seventh and eighth grade progress report, which will look like our traditional progress report right now. This school year, we have begun rolling out professional development for our middle school secondary teachers. There's been required building professional learning started this school year um, to support the precursor for our teachers in the planning with scales, preparing for the grading and that. Teacher support documents are already in process. Some are being posted as we speak and all of them will be available for teachers by June 5th. Yeah, they got a preview of the Synergy grading system at our February in-service and will receive full training in August. And then leadership retreat training with Tammy Heffelbauer in June for our district principals and identified leaders as well. The communication toolkit has been developed to support our schools in their communication with families. These highlight how grades and standards reference grading convert to a letter grade, the employability targets, and other frequently asked questions. So due to numerous questions around secondary, we've moved up our communication timeline with um, parents in the community and have four upcoming parent Q&A sessions that will focus around these four questions as well as others that we gather between now and then. These will begin happening in April. Hey, is, are, do you have any questions? Yes, we do have some questions. Okay. Um, Julie? Okay. Um, just so that I understand this a little bit better. Um, you said you started out the year with 41 targets. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you kind of listened to teachers. You got feedback, listened to teacher, teachers, and made the modification to focus on 25 of those. We started the year with 25. Oh, OK. Each grade level, kinder through fifth, has quite a few targets available. And each, each grade level started with a smaller number. OK, so. So we're at 25, yes. So 25 for each grade level? You. Julie, um, what I think she's asking you is we started out with 25, then we listened to feedback, then we bumped that 25 down to? 
No, we how are, many did you did you when we listened the first time and we went down to how many? Five. We went to five, but we but we need to be at twenty five. So we went back to. We're still so we st we bumped it down and said at the beginning of the year five, and then we added some. And now by the end of the year, we are, we are wanting teachers to assess all and make sure students have all 25 assessed. But n next year, we're looking at is 25 needing to go down? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So does, that, so does that mean that then on the report cards that like when you want bump down to five that only those five were all that was assessed on, their, on, their, on a kid's report card? For the first quarter in just ELA. Because we did assess, okay. we did, on the report card it has ELA, math, science, social studies, and all the fine arts. Got it. So we're just talking about ELA here. Yes, that's just one example. Okay, so did that happen in the other subjects also that that you yes. cut down and mm -hmm. targeted? So then, so then the report cards then would have just reflected the ones that they were targeting. Correct. The modified mm -hmm. version. Okay. So now, um, when you go then to sixth grade implementation next year, are you going to start with a modified number, knowing that it was challenging at the elementary level, or? I think the goal is, al is always to start with something manageable. And it's just, it's really difficult to know what that number is. And so that's something that we're going to have to continue to get feedback and to problem solve because even where we have you know on one hand that's too many on the other hand we also have feedback that it's not enough and um, I, I you know I know you're in contact with Kim and yes. you know she gave her feedback tonight um, what are I, I hear when I talk to teachers you know the concerns about um, Everybody thinks it's a good thing, you know. Everybody thinks in the in the end that it's a good thing, but they're having challenges with getting it implemented. So, kind of, kind of, how does that work for you guys as far as your process of being able to get that feedback? And you know, it's it seems like you're doing a, trying to do a lot of things to help with that. You know, this this Otis dilemma is one of the ones I've heard about a lot. One of the ones Kim mentioned. Seems like you're you're working at trying mm -hmm. to solve some of that stuff, but just how does that feedback loop work for you guys as far as how to how to get the information about what help is needed? Right, we get a lot of feedback from we get feedback from teachers, from coaches, from our the, especially from the groups that we invite in to work on things. We have quite a few task force teams that meet. Um, you know, right now we have groups that are meeting almost every night for different things to get this implemented and problem solve around things. And so we also talk regularly to Kim and Gabe. And I, I think what we do is we continue to listen and try to make things better and problem solve. Yeah. Just like on your, just like on your films, you know, people think it's a great thing, and they right. acknowledge that change is hard, but it is. It's just one of those growing pains, I think, for uh, for a lot of people. So, thank thank you for your, thank you for listening, and thank you for your hard work. Ron. Yes, uh, I was just wanting to find out. So, on one of the pages, you have the math uh, checklist, and uh, well, both are math. But it uh, looks pretty objective there. And so uh, kind of bouncing off what uh, Julie was saying, uh, actually what Kim was saying, is there some subjectivity going on? So is there uh, going to be some consistency in particular to uh, middle school, the upper grades, and in particular um, high school? So will, will, it, will it be pretty objective, or will there be some subjectivity where uh, teachers might not be so consistent? with their grading I think it come I think that will get better with time okay I think as people get as they get to know the scales better as we get to know um, as, as our assessments get better as mm. we are working together to share resources it'll it will eventually we'll just get better each year 
Okay. And so, and there, are there any other schools like around our size that we're able to maybe look at? And I mean, I know we're getting information from our own sure. teachers and stuff like that, but I mean, what about other schools around, like maybe, I don't know, Denver or Tulsa? You know, I'm just thinking of something like that. We do. Um, I actually talk quite a bit to Noel in Des Moines. Okay. Uh, but we, we do talk to other districts, and mm -hmm. we are often looking at many districts to see what they're doing. One of the task force we have right now is a homework task force, and so we're currently reaching out to, I think we, we're reaching out to about 10 different districts to find okay. out what, it, what are they doing, how did it go, things like that. Okay, thank you. Mike? I know Ron and Julie have both kind of breached on this question, but I'm going to ask it a little more bluntly. <laughs> That's the way I am. If you watch this video in a week, you're going to hear somebody say, we hate SRG. And then when you watch this presentation, you're going to see, yeah, there's some problems with it, but we're learning it and we're okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I've gotten some phone calls from teachers. And I, it was actually about an issue that some how they got it wrong but it's okay i'm glad they called me and the srg happened to come up with this it was totally unsolicited and they all liked it so i'm sitting here going what's the percentage of like to dislike in reality and because you know if we pull five people tomorrow and those five people hate it then we ought to throw it away which is wrong if we poll, have we polled every teacher in the district on SRG that's talk, using SRG today would be one of my first questions. And the second question is, is what data are we listening to when we hear about problems with SRG? And I'm so confused right now sitting here because I, you know, I, I get the fact that it doesn't talk to Synergy, which is I don't understand. And I'm not going to understand, but where are we really at with like to dislike? Because we saw these teachers today, and they were, I think they were very honest. They said, hey, I got some problems with it, but I worked through it. The kids worked through it. We figured it out, and we jumped on it, and we're, we're good to go. You know, and we heard something else that was, was opposite. So... Can you give me a spectrum? I mean, you may not be able to, and if you can't, just say so, and it won't hurt my feelings. Dr. Thompson? Yes. With any change, um, what, what I heard them say was mind shift change. This is a whole um, culture shift, different way of thinking, different way of grading, different way of planning from what we've ever done before. And anytime you have something like that, you're going to have bumps, bruises, scratches, and scrapes. But the whole point of this is, is we have to rally together because it's showing that it's impacting our school and our children in a positive way. And that's what we're all here for. So what I'm gonna say is, is we have to rally together to solve the bumps, the bruises, the things that we need to do so that we can make sure that we are not dragging, pulling, um, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be pleasant. It's not for us either. We had to learn scrapes at the district level to learn what this is, and it's going to take all of us working together. So what I will say is that, yes, there are people who probably hate it, but they think it's good for kids. I think there are people that like it because it helps them to make them better. And I bet you there are, I mean, so any, along the whole spectrum of everything that you just said, you're going to find somebody or a group of people. But what I would hope that we would do is that we would rally together and that we would continue to listen to our parents, our students, our teachers, our principals, our union. I would hope that we would listen to what they're saying and then we come together as a unit and we would problem solve so that we get in a good sweet spot. And then we, once we get this and over time, it will get better. It's just with like anything, riding a bike, doing anything that you do every day, once you get good at it, then it becomes second nature to you. But during the time when you're learning it, just like a bike, you fall off, you get scrapes, you don't run a ride, you get mad, you do all these things. 
but we got to hold ourselves together and push through because it will make a difference for kids. So I just think I, 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 I understand. I listen. But we've got to be able to kind of work together on this so that we can do what's right for kids and the teachers because it takes all of us in order to get this done. Ben? Um, so uh, I look at the, um, the progress report and I see fractional, uh, like a 2.5, like a 3.5. Um, is that going to be part of the normal standard to, to report uh, like half proficiency on, some, on a report like this? Yes, and what is not on that progress report that we're still working on is putting the codes at the top so that you can see what each of those means. Okay. So that, that's coming. Okay. Um, I obviously have heard lots like all of us has, have about this, but what I am consistently hearing from people, even though they've really struggled with this, is I'm consistently hearing that this is raising the level of instruction. I may have been teaching something, but I was teaching it at a lower level, and now I know I have to raise that, which that's the right thing, obviously, for kids. If we can get them on true grade level, then when those major assessments come, it becomes easier for them. Um, the other thing I'm consistently hearing is that they really believe it's good for kids, but it's just been a struggle, you know? And we are now three-fourths the way through our school year, and I'm hearing people sort of breathe and feel like maybe they're moving, but it's still a struggle. I mean, I think that's something we have to admit. This has been difficult. I do think they, they also say it's making this way more transparent for parents, for teachers, and for students. They understand what they're supposed to learn and how they can get better at it. And they haven't always known how to do that as a child in a classroom. They just got it, and then if they got a B, they thought, well, what did I need to do to get an A or vice versa? Um, some of the concerns that I've been hearing pretty consistently also are on the scales and, and how do we get those scales, the work that says, you know, here's the one, two, three, four, you've done that, but then they have to kind of put it into kid language and put it in their classroom. And I was at the, the in-service day in February and in a, in a session where they were working on scales and we had a lot of teachers in that room that weren't quite sure how to go about doing that yet. So are there plans for more and more and more training in that area and sharing of scales? So if somebody develops one, would they be willing to put it on our website or somewhere so somebody could look at it so that when they're doing it, they've got those good models to, to base it on? Yes, actually we're working on making a Microsoft team. In Microsoft Teams, we're working on setting it up so that teachers can share in their grade levels. And so we do have that. It's being developed and then September 8th is going to be our next day where we continue to do professional learning at, at elementary and at the secondary level like we did at our February and Will there service. be anything offered through the summer? I know teachers are yes. off, but will there be things if they want to come, they could? Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we currently have reading symposium that we're, that we're advertising for, and we have a SPED summit, and we have quite a few things. Okay, great. And the last thing, and you brought this up in your presentation, Otis has been a bit of a problem for us. And, and it's my understanding that you're going to use Synergy at the middle school level instead of Otis, is that correct? And have you looked at, would Synergy be better at elementary than Otis? I don't know the answers to that. I'm just asking, is that something you've been questioning? So we're using Synergy at pre-K as well. So our kinder through fifth grade, right now what we're doing is we're setting up a demo so that we can really see if that is something that would be easier, because that would be the that would be the question: is is it easier? Yeah. So yeah, because I'm that. not anxious to change our teachers when they've learned Otis to something else <laughs> if it's not a whole lot better. <laughs> so, 
I'm glad you're checking that out. And, and I personally believe this is the right thing to do for our kids. Uh, and and I, I hear full well it's been a difficult process, but, but I think it's the right thing to do for our kids. And at this time, I really would just like to thank the teachers, whoever's listening and have insomnia at night, like, <laughs> <laughs> because we know that this has been rough, but it has been rough for all of us to try to balance it and not stop. Because I know another thing that teachers hate is for us to start something and then stop it and then start something else and stop and start. So what, what I'm saying is, is I know that it's difficult. I don't know who I'm looking at. Is the TV over here? Hey, teachers. I know that it is difficult at this time for us to, I mean, we, we know that it's gotten a little better, but we still have work to do to continue to make it right. So we will continue to listen. We will continue to adjust. And any feedback that you have, I know you've all been giving it because I've get some emails as well and then we forward them on and I know that we make those adjustments and we will continue to do that until we make it right, not only for the kids, but also what's right for you because we can't do this work and the kids can't learn without you and we know we need you. So if you can hang in there with us and keep giving the feedback, we will continue to adjust and we will get this right and we will have a win-win on all sides. So again, thank you teachers for everything that you're doing. I echo that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We will look forward to the next time. Thank you. Next item, Mike.